in group one? Where oh, is she? Sorry, oh, there you are. Liz? Um, so we went after the um, Create a Post-Secondary Student Profile that is monitored and integrated uh, between the school district and the partner system so that we have a dashboard. The champion would be the district and the, um, the district and campus leadership teams. Um, the measure is uh, based against an electronic profile uh, that a student would have an asset map um, and uh, San Antonio Education Partnership has talked about a certification that would then be honored by um, partners, uh, IHE partners. Um, the second strategy had, had to do with that, and it would be to um, address both content and college readiness indicators that came up either in the red or the yellow. We were, our measure would be a red, yellow, or green dot. If it's green, the student's good on that particular measure, and we have, a, we have an example over there. If they're yellow or red, that would that would cause some kind of a, an alarm bell to go off, and then we, we would um, basically work with that student uh, and service providers to get them either caught up to take the SAT, studying whatever they needed to. Um, the alignment would be improved college readiness, um, and again, the champion would be the district and campus leadership teams. Very good, thank you. Group number two. <laughs> I've been used to four all day. I'm sorry. Um, we're the counseling component of this thing. The um, strategy that we had was basically an implementation of a comprehensive curriculum guidance program. This really isn't anything new. It's not a new strategy. Um, our our issue was more so that um, we would need to basically reduce or eliminate non-essential duties that we have on campus and have a little bit more role clarity to implement what we're trained to do already. So um, so we would want to basically implement what we already have in the line. The activities we would use would be ca uh, classroom guidance for K through 12. Um, we talked about a champion for the cause, and basically we all have a director of guidance in our districts, but if we want to come together and collaborate, it would be more um, more so somebody like a Region 20 representative like Pam Chambers or somebody like that. Um, how we would measure this would be more number of classroom visits, number of students served, and the um, the alignment with the diplomas in the SA 2020 would be the 85% uh, student demonstration of college readiness. <coughs> I'm going to need your forms, so if you could just kind of flesh it out and make sure I can read the handwriting. Group <laughs> 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 number three. It's about to appear on the screen. Very good. Mm -hmm. oh, this is <laughs> specialist 
months or whatever in order to do the walkthroughs and the measures that we'll need to see in the applications. So <clears throat> the action steps are that the districts will send teaching staff and also administrative staff uh, to these training events and then the group of CNI folks already get together four times during the year through the curriculum forum and the afternoon now is dedicated to the college readiness forum and we will bring exemplars and samples of where we're seeing that rigor increase or not, okay? And that will be a, a source of conversation and share out. We, um, we already have some of those mechanisms. Essay Ready is in Pathways now are merging their lessons. <coughs> And so the teachers will have available lessons that we ought to be able to see adapted in our classrooms. And um, that's, the, that's the measure we will use. So it will also come out in 85% passing or meeting metrics on the SAT, ACT. Okay, go ahead and scroll down. It will also enormously help the AP readiness, and uh, we particularly thought of Southwest and the fact that you all are rolling in with your um, with your College Board Springboard curriculum. So our champion is really the mechanism we already have in place, SA Ready and Region 20, and Sarah McAndrew is heading up SA 20 along with Gen Texas, et cetera and is also <coughs> working with pathways <coughs> where these groups merge. And then you add in the Region 20, and Jeff is going to talk tomorrow. Uh, so the time frame is we're going to start look, looking for measurables and checking our, the pulse of where we are on this through August of 2013. Uh, we're going to look at the percentage of administrators and teachers who have attended the training, uh, implementation back in the classroom through walkthrough data, sample work that illustrates the rise of rigor, incorporation of discussions of rigor into department chair meetings so that when Dennis Alexander has his, all of his high school campus chairs sitting there, rigor is on the agenda and, and ways to increase rigor. I uh, forgot where I was, uh, Region 20, Mathport, and all those places that we're going to look. The alignment, it's already aligned with SA 2020, certainly with diplomas and increasing scores in the CCRS. So it's, it's a pretty high <coughs> alignment, I think. Thank you very much. <laughs> Group number four. <laughs> Basically what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give me the thing in writing. Okay, well we didn't we didn't really write anything. I wrote notes, but we can Okay. okay. Um, we talked about how um, the state of Texas already gives us the thirteen criteria to identify a student who's at risk of dropping out of school. We know that, right? What we would like to see are those leading indicators that are associated with a college graduate. If we can have the information to be able to determine and work backwards, look at all of our kids who are college graduates, and take that information and work backwards through elementary, through middle, to really profile what does a college graduate really look like. Instead of us always focusing on what interventions to provide to students who are at risk of dropping out of school, really provide those um, enhancements to students who are uh, potential college graduates, you know, that they have those leading indicators that are associated with a college graduate and maybe changing the way we start thinking about our information and our data to look more proactively 
and identifying those key ideas, those key data elements that are associated with a college graduate, really profiling a college graduate. We're so used to profiling a high school graduate, we really need to start profiling a college graduate and start looking at those key data elements. One of the, the drawbacks, or one of the things that we have as a barrier that we should all really start thinking about, and that is a universal ID. Until we can have a universal ID, at least for Texas, we will really be limited at the amount of information that we can collect. And it was even recommended that it will be associated with Apply Texas. Okay, so the student submits a, an application through Apply Texas. Maybe they get an ID through there that they keep. And we as districts can really look at the student's performance and just have some way of tracking them in college. So I really think that the data that we have available to us, it's just, since it's not linked on social and they're, they're using like name and for FASFA we use the zip code, which our kids, you know, move so around so much. So just a better way of tracking that post-secondary success, I think, is kind of what we talked about and where we need to go. Thank you. So those of you that have your form, if you could give it to Jacob, is that okay, Jacob? And then we'll collect it. On behalf of the facilitators, Jacob, Elizabeth, Gina, and myself, thank you so much. It was a packed day, but I'll tell you, the time flew by. You know, it's obvious that we rolled up our sleeves, we got to work, and you know what? The best is yet to come. This is just the beginning. I'm going to turn it back over to Patrick, and he's just going to have some closing remarks. And also, we wish you a good afternoon, and like I said, the best is yet to come. Thank you, Alma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before we adjourn for the day, I have just, just some uh, closing thoughts. Um, first of all, tomorrow's schedule, we start at 8 o'clock in the morning, so uh, make sure that you go over the schedule. Uh, we will be here at 8, and then uh, we also have uh, Greg Darnita will be sharing some stories from the road with us. And then we have a gallery walk that's going to take place where you get to go around and see some of the uh, what the partners are doing that are part of this Diplomas Collective. Um, and utilize if you haven't already been utilizing them how you can use them to help reach these goals my, my job I feel as the project director of diplomas is to is to listen to all this and then once we go through all this information is to follow up with each of you uh, through the partnership to find out where we can help you and where we can assist you so if it was about SAT and I've heard SAT prep and so forth well, where can we align uh, partners to help you reach that goal of reaching out uh, more SAT preparation to kids as an example and so that's what we don't want this to just be hey we got together today and then that was it and it got, goes up on somebody's wall and then it never we never do anything with it so that's my commitment that that we have um, to you and so again I want to reiterate a special thank you to Greg Darnieder from the from the White House for being here and again he'll be here tomorrow Mayor Costler will join us tomorrow as well for a press conference all of this kind of culminates with this the signing of this collective impact uh, agreement. I uh, also want to thank uh, some people that have really been benef really been drivers, I guess, of this initiative. I mean, it's a, been a partnership, but there's always got to be a couple of people that just really drive it. And special thank you to uh, Ira uh, of the San Antonio Education Partnership, Judy McCormick of P316 of Bear County, and also Gene Russell of the Mayor's Office. Uh, they've been working, um, again, this, I identified partners earlier, but they have really, you know, helped uh, push this along and have really been open to, um, to, to having other people look at this proposal and this initiative and provide feedback and thought to it. And that's not always easy to do, kind of what you've done today. And so I'm going to make sure that I thank them. And again, even though you've done this already, Alma, I want to thank you, uh, a big thank you to you for what you've done this afternoon here. This is not easy to do. Most times you probably do all of this in about a week. Uh, over several months and we've we've managed to get all of you here today and to do this so thank you for that and again special thank you to the um, to Jacob and to Elizabeth of TG uh, um, um, Gina and Tan and Tangelo of uh, Mike Villadiao's office and uh, where's my final facilitator who was it uh, Alma oh yes we've thought, we've thought you already okay and so just closing thoughts that I'd like to give on what has been discussed today and the value of each of you coming here today to work and discuss and identify opportunities for cross-sector collaboration. Your presence today signifies your commitment to the principle of co collective impact, to that we can get a lot done if we don't care who gets, you know, the, the credit for it. Uh, 
And in the end, it's about student success and the economic sustainability and the cultural viability of the city of San Antonio. The Diplomas Latino Student Success Initiative, coupled with the SA 2020 goals, signifi signifies to each of you, and I hope, I hope this signifies to you, that you are not alone. That Diplomas represents that the business community, the higher education community, the community-based organizations, foundations, and philanthropic groups understand that we are all responsible for the success of our students, and specifically in this project, our Latino students in San Antonio. It calls on all of us to do more. And with that, it reminds me of a story about the individual at the gate. Now, it's a gate that passes you to the next, the next life, so whatever, whatever life that is for you. Uh, but this individual gets to this gate, and the person that is uh, at the gate says, before I can let you pass, you have to tell me why you deserve to pass, why you deserve to make this transition. Uh, and the individual says, well, because I never did anything wrong. I never did this, I never did that, I was never a bad person. And the individual said, well, it's not quite good enough. And the person says, well, I don't understand, I didn't do anything wrong. He says, well, you didn't do anything wrong, but as I look here, you didn't really do anything either. And the reason that I tell that story is because it speaks to our moral imperative. And we cannot forget that even though what we've talked about today is data-driven and how do we use that data to create strategies and interventions, we must also be driven by this moral imperative, this moral imperative that drives us, uh, and it cannot be left out. It cannot be left out of the equation because all of you are here today and you've been doing what you've been doing because of that drive. And so diploma stands for, again, more than just an education as the tagline reads. It stands for you are not alone. It stands for what we can do together. Most importantly, diploma stands for we must all do mas. And so thank you for being here. Enjoy your evenings and we'll see you in the morning.